How many of us had an expectation uh, when you came into the year of our Lord 2020? Many of us have fallen down on our way to victory. What is weighing you down right now in this season of your life? you want to finish strong, if you want to win the race, you must lay down burdens that you've been holding on to. And there are some sins that you got to turn away from. Eyes have not seen and ears have not heard what God has planned for your life. Join us over the next seven weeks as together we learn how to finish strong in 2020. Let's learn and grow together at EBC Steel Creek. Good morning, Ebenezer Baptist Church, Steel Creek in Charlotte, North Carolina. This is the day that the Lord has made and we shall rejoice and be glad therein. Listen, I need you to do me a favor. Take just a moment and like. I need you to comment and I need you to share this broadcast because somebody needs to see this experience. Somebody needs to worship with us and enjoy this encounter because I believe that God is up to something great. And if you're going to participate in it, he's going to make it worth your while. So go ahead, take a moment. Don't stroll. Don't go away. Share this broadcast and tell somebody about the goodness of Jesus because the Lord is still good and the Lord is still mighty and the Lord is still strong. I celebrate him today for his faithfulness and his goodness towards us. Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, give him glory. Come on, give him praise. Come on, give him honor. Come on, give him worship. Come on, give him adoration. Come on, give him what's due. Open your mouth. Where you are, open your mouth. Come on, open your mouth. Come on, open your mouth. Give him the name glory. Give his name honor. And give his name praise. Oh yeah, we celebrate him this morning for his goodness towards us. Hallelujah. The word of the Lord in Isaiah chapter 40. Thank you, Lord. Isaiah chapter 40. You've grabbed your family and you all are excited to be worshiping with us. We welcome you this morning. We thank God that you are here. Isaiah chapter 40 verse 28 says, Has thou not known, has thou not heard, that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, Fainteth not, neither is he weary. There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint. And to them that have no might, he increaseth strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary. And the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Tell somebody, I'm getting my strength back. They shall mount up with wings as evil. They shall run and not be weary. I got a backtrack. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. You thought you couldn't fly no more, but they shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run. Somebody say run. Put it in the comments box and say, I'm getting ready to run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. If you're excited about the word of the Lord and you know you're going to finish strong and you can't wait to see that all God has for your life, I need you to put some hand claps in the comment box. Put some celebration emojis. Put some smiling faces and tell them I'm getting ready to run on to see what the end's going to be. Father, we thank you. We bless you, Lord, for who you are. 
We thank you, God, for this worship experience. Now, God, we say inhabit our praise, inhabit our worship. Do everything that you want to do in this place. Father, we petition you to come on in the room. Take control over our living room space. Take control over our jobs. Take control over this live stream. And we'll forever lift you up. And we'll forever give you the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Somebody shout amen. Come on, let's worship the Lord today for who he is and his greatness. Come on, put your hands together on your couch, in your home, in the living room. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Everybody make some noise. Sing the praises. Sing the praises to our King. Come on, you got it. We sing the praises. That's it. Give Him glory. Give Him glory. For He's the King. Give Him glory. For He's the King. Give Him glory. For He's the King. Give Him glory. We sing the praises. Come on, you know this jam. We sing the praises. We sing the praises. Oh, we sing the praises. Give him glory. For he's the king. Give him glory. For he's the king. Give him glory. For he's the king. For he's the king. Give him glory, Give him glory for, he's for he's the king. One more time, we sing the praises. Sing the praises to our king, for he is the king. Oh, it's Sunday king. morning, come on. The praises to our for he's the king. The king. The king. We sing the praises. Sing the praises to our king. Yes, we do, Jesus. We sing the praises. Sing the praises to our king. Ah, yeah. Give him glory. Give him glory for he's the king. Give his name the glory. He is the king. Come on and give him glory. Yes, we do. We come to give him glory. For he's the king. Sing all hell. Come on, we worship your name. We lift you up, Jesus. Sing all Sing all hell, all hell, oh, Come on, I know you sung this at your church. Everybody, he reigns forever. 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 He reigns over what you're going through. He reigns in your family. Yes, he reigns. Everybody say he reigns forever. He reigns forever. He reigns forever. He reigns forever. I'm so glad to know it. I'm so glad to know it. Yes, you do, Jesus. Forever. Every day you do. 
king was not defeated, but he is still God, and he reigns forever. today that God is reigning in your life oh where you are just take a moment and lift your hands and say God you still reign hallelujah oh glory come on tell them God you still reign my hands are lifted up to you Lord and my mouth is so filled with praise and my heart is forever grateful he didn't have to do it, but he did. Hallelujah. Oh, oh, oh. I pray you're worshiping with us wherever you are. If you're driving, you can't lift your hands, but with my hands lifted up. Oh. And my mouth filled with praise With the heart of thanksgiving I will bless thee, O oh Lord mm -hmm. With my hands lifted up oh, And my mouth filled with praise Thank you, Lord. With a heart of thanksgiving, I will bless thee, O oh Lord. With my hands lifted up, and my mouth filled with praise. With a heart of thanksgiving. I will bless the Lord. Bless thee, oh Lord. Come on, that's all the song says. With my hands lifted up, with my hands lifted up. and my mouth filled with praise. And my mouth filled with praise. Oh God, I praise you with the heart of thanksgiving. With the heart of thanksgiving. Yes, sir. I will bless the Lord. Come on, let's lift it in the room. With my hands lifted up, with my hands lifted up, and my mouth filled with praise, and my mouth filled with praise, with the heart of thanksgiving, Lord. With the heart of thanksgiving, Father, I will bless you, Jesus. I bless thee, oh Lord. You gotta get the glory. With my hands lifted up. With my hands lifted up. 
I will bless thee, O oh Lord. Ooh, I'm getting happy, y'all. With the heart of thanksgiving, I will bless thee, O oh Lord. I've got to bless you, O oh Lord. Oh, 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 I will bless you, oh Lord, with the heart of thanksgiving. I will bless thee, oh Lord. I love you. I love you. I love you, Lord today because you cared for me in such a special way that's why I praise you and I lift you up and I magnify your name Oh, that's why my heart is filled, my heart, my mind, my soul belongs to you. You pay the price for me. Way back on Calvary. That's why I praise you. Yeah. God Almighty. I lift you up and I magnify your name. Oh, I just got real happy. That's why my heart is feeling. It's filled with so much praise. Oh, 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 oh. Y'all, excuse me, I thought I was in my bedroom. That's why my heart is filled with praise. Oh, 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 oh. say that's why, that's why my Come on, get lost in your worship. Sing, that's why. That's why my heart is filled, it's filled with, with so, praise. so much praise. Oh, oh, that's why. That's why my heart is filled, it's filled with praise. praise. I got another thank you, Jesus. I got another hallelujah. That's why. Yes, it's filled. Yes, it's filled. Yes, it's filled. Yes, it's filled. Yes, that's why. That's why my heart is filled. Oh, 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 o
I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting. Oh, tis so sweet to trust in Jesus. Just to take him at his word, just to rest upon his promise, just to know the said the Lord. I'm getting ready to sit down. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust you, how I prove him more and more. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, my precious, God, you're my precious Jesus. Mary's baby Jesus Oh for grace To trust him I don't mind waiting I hope your hands are lifted I don't mind waiting We're preparing for the word I don't mind waiting On you Lord Don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting. No, I give myself away. I promise I'm trying to let this go, but the Holy Ghost was keeping me here. Oh. Give myself away so you can use me. I give myself away. Oh, sing that with me. I give myself away so you, so you. Can you? Can you? I give myself. I give myself away. Let's sing. Come on, from your living room in your house. Oh, I give myself I away. Give myself away. So you can use so me. You can use me. Can use I give myself give away. Myself To me, Jesus, but I belong to you, Lord. I give myself away. So you, so you can you can use me. Pastor Walt is coming. I'm going to my seat. My life is not my own. To you I belong. Oh, I give myself. I give myself to you. Come on, keep the worship. Going. Say it keep one it going, time. Keep it going. My life is not my own. Wherever you are, so you are belong. To you I belong. I give myself away. I give myself so I give myself oh, to can you. Me. One more time, say. Myself away, so you, so you, I give myself, give myself away. Yeah! 
Thank you for this opportunity to give ourselves away to you in worship. That means, Father, that we will just trust you and we will just learn to, to trust you, Father God, when we don't even understand what you're doing. We will learn, Father God, to trust you, Father God, when we can't trace your hand. We will learn, Father God, to trust your heart, Father God, even when it doesn't make sense in our head. We will learn to trust you, Father God, because we have tried everything else and everything else has failed. Everybody else has let us down. Everybody else has talked about us. Everybody else has given up on us. But God, here we are today. We are here in your presence, Father God, surrendering ourselves to you. We surrender ourselves, Father God, because we understand that in your hands, God, you want to do a great work through us, Father. But we understand that we come before you broken, God. So right now, God, I'm asking that you mold us and shape us and fix us and form us, Father God, so that we can be used for your glory. I thank you, Father God, how you continue to use this praise ministry. I thank you, Father God, for how you continue to use this media ministry. I thank you, Father God, for how you continue to use the volunteers and the mission team and everything. Here we are, God. We are here to worship. Here we are, God. We are here to bow down because you saw something in us, Father God, that nobody else could. And now, God, as we prepare to go into worship, Father God, clear my mind, Father God, so that I can think right. Clear my tongue, Father God, so that I may speak right. Fix it within me, Father God, so that the people will not see me, not see my problems, not see my frailties, Father God, but they will see you. They will hear from you. And oh Lord, when it's all said and done, we'll be careful to give your name all of the glory, all of the honor, and all of the praise. It is in the powerful name of Jesus, the people of God say together, amen, amen, Amen. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Amen. Hebrews, the 12th chapter, verse 1 through 3. I'm reading from the ESV uh, version um, this time, the English Standard Version. And the word of the Lord reads as follows. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith. King James says that Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith, who the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured from sinners such hostility against himself so that you may not grow weary or faint hearted. I'm excited my brothers and sisters as we are walking into a new series. I need you to stay with me for the next seven weeks. I know that sounds like a long time, but I'm gonna give you a money back guarantee. Not for real, but you know what I'm saying. I put it this way, if you stay with us for the next seven weeks, the Holy Spirit is gonna speak to you about how to finish strong. Can you type that in? Finish strong. Let me tell you what I'm talking about. How many of us started off this year with a dream, with a vision, a plan, uh, maybe it was a continuation of something from the year before, but how many of us had an expectation uh, when you came into the year of our Lord 2020? Shout out to all other preachers out there was talking about vision 
2020, et cetera, et cetera. Y'all know we all saw big things for most of us as it related to 2020. But let's be honest. Answer this question for me. Did your vision, did your dream, did your plan get interrupted in any capacity? Answer this question for me. Has the thing that you have been praying for, the thing that you was hoping for, the thing that you thought would get better, has that thing still not happened for you? So if you stay with us for the next seven weeks, I believe the Holy Spirit is going to teach you how to finish strong. Some of y'all hard-headed. You didn't type it in the first time. I need you to talk to me. I want to talk to you today. We're going to talk about finishing strong. Can I help you? Media team is going to help me out here in a moment. I'm going to help you to understand a great analogy as it relates to finishing strong. Anybody remember uh, Heather uh, Dornadin? She's now Heather Camp. Anybody remember that video? This is a story of a, of a young lady uh, back in 2008 where she, some of you seen this, this video went viral, but it's a video back from 2008 where this lady was competing in the 2008 Big Ten Indoor Championship and as she was competing in this championship she was trying to win in the 600 meter final. Let me show you this video and I want to show you what happens because something happened to her as she was going through this race that I believe will not only bless you it certainly blessed me. Let me let me see this on your screen as you watching it. I want you to see something and we're going to talk about this for a moment. Thank you, media team. We can stop it right there. Wasn't that incredible, y'all? What did, did you see her? Did you see this young lady, Heather, fall flat on her face in this 600-meter final? And even though at some part of the race she was in last, by the grace of God, she ended up winning. I say by the grace of God because I don't know her personally. I don't know her faith, but I do know her story, and her story blessed me real good, and I pray that it bless you. See, the Big Ten Network did an interview with her and they had to talk to her because this went viral everybody was watching it it was watched well over a million times and they said what happened to you Heather what happened how did you fall down and the first thing that Heather said that really jumped out is she said that while she was in the race she was making a move and when she was making a move she tripped and fell down y'all know why that blessed me because if we're going to finish strong and we are going to fall down sometimes if we're ever trying to make a move Somebody right now is trying to do a new thing in your life. Somebody right now has been called to into a new season, into a new relationship, into a new ministry assignment. But guess what? Whenever you are going to make a move, there is a great possibility that you might do what? You might fall down. So Heather says that she was trying to make a move. She fell down. And when she fell down, the author, uh, the interviewer asked her this question. When you fell on your face, how did it make you feel? Did it 
give you some extra adrenaline. And she said, well, I got uh, some adrenaline. But she said, but I will tell you what really got me going, she says, was the presence of the fans that were there and her teammates who had put everything on the line. Listen, we're going to come back to that in a minute, but I can't skip over it. It's kind of like what we just read in the text that she was surrounded by a cloud of witnesses. And she says something about being around people that was cheering her on made her get up off of her face. It made her get up off of her stomach. And then she just began to run. And he said, well, what happened next? He said, what was going through your mind? Because at this pl time, you were in last place. She said, well, I recognize that if I just finished the race, at least my team would get one point. For those of you that don't follow track and field, it's a team event. And even if you don't get in first place, if you finish, you will get some points that will go to the total. And so at this point, she's not thinking about herself. She's thinking about the fact that if I just finish, maybe I will help the team. And so as she starts to run with the goal of just finishing, I believe we see two things in her life that will bless us real good. As she is running toward the finish, we see her wisdom and then we see her faith. Can I show it to you? See, she was just not an ordinary runner. She was somebody that understood how to race. You see, she was one that had been racing her entire life. She was one that had had victories before. She was a scholar athlete. She was highly recruited. So she understood how to race. She understood the mechanics of track and field. She understood acceleration. And the more I started to research about her wisdom, the Lord led me to her resume. Her resume happens to let us know that she was a major in kinesiology. And for what kinesiology is, it's the study of the human body and human movement. So in other words, she was familiar with track. She was familiar with her body and she knew in her head that she had the ability to do it. That's what wisdom does because some of you are going to need some wisdom if you are going to finish strong. And over the next seven weeks, we're going to talk about two things every Sunday in a different capacity. We're going to grow our wisdom and we're going to have a more intimate faith. She had an amazing faith, not based on what she knew, her wisdom, but not initially based on what she saw. Her faith was based on her wisdom, the fact that she knew track, the fact that she knew her body, and the fact that she knew she needed to finish, but God hadn't shown her the victory. Because I want to tell you something, the Bible is clear and true that faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of the Lord. But let us be honest, Elder Q, let us be honest, Reverend Johnson, aren't you glad that that while that is absolutely a biblical statement that we have to get in the word of God if our faith is going to grow aren't you glad that every now and then God gives us a glimpse of the victory ahead every now and then he gives us a little peek into our future what do you mean you see Heather said that while she was running she saw something that she didn't initially see she saw the person that was in last place she saw that she was was gaining on her and as she saw that she could catch up with the person in last place all of a sudden her faith took a leap and she said I might be able to catch up with the pack I'm just trying to talk to somebody right now God hadn't revealed everything to you but maybe he's showing you just a peak and that peak might be just the adrenaline boost you need to finish strong well men and women of God you saw what happened next uh, because she got a glimpse of what was ahead she pushed forward effortlessly to go ahead and win this 600 meter championship. My brothers and sisters, I pray that this story blesses you because many of us have fallen down on our way to victory. And that's actually what we find in the text. The author of Hebrews was writing to Jewish Christians to encourage them to persevere 
through persecution. They was going through a lot because they had become followers of the way. They were going through a lot because they were following Jesus. They were going through a lot because they weren't doing what everybody else was doing. They were going through a lot because something that was strange about them. There was something peculiar about them. Our Elder Q, you blessed me real good a couple of weeks ago when you reminded us of the fact that we shouldn't be looking back to going, we shouldn't be looking, uh, looking to go forward back to old stuff. We shouldn't be looking to go forward to a new normal. We are, uh, we are called to stand out. We are a royal priesthood. We are a chosen generation and the being chosen sometimes comes with some chosen struggles. Amen somebody. You know that the Lord has chosen you. You know that the Lord has called you out but you cry a little bit different. You weep a little bit different. Don't worry about it. You are in good company because that's what comes with the territory so in the text we see the first thing that we see and I'm just going to walk through this text and I won't be with you long today but I just want to walk through the text the first thing we see is this it says therefore since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses can I stop right there on the text uh, as I was looking at this this, this, this there, therefore, this therefore is a conjunctive adverb that in a nutshell, all it does is tell you, you need to go and look at the next chapter if this going to make sense to you. It takes us back to the 11th chapter because as the author was trying to encourage the people who were going through the struggle, as he was trying to encourage the people that was had fallen down, he said, I need you to be reminded that you are surrounded by a cloud of witnesses that are praying for you you that are pulling for you that went through their own struggle and then he starts to go through the lineage he talks about Abraham who was encouraged to go to a place on a promise that he had never been through before he talked about Noah who was encouraged to build a massive boat to survive a flood and it had not even rained for many years the list goes on and on and he gives a list of Gideon and Barak and Samson and David and many other prophets who had the call on their life to overthrow kingdoms but even though they were kingdom overthrowers even though they were on assignment to change regimes they fell sometimes they struggled sometimes even though they had all of this power they had some setbacks he said that these people they had the authority of God to shut the mouth of lions they had the authority of God to quench the fiery flames they escaped death by the sword they did all of this and you are surrounded by this cloud of witnesses to remind you that the same way God kept them, the same way God wants to keep you. Men and women of God, I'm here to tell you that you are going to finish strong this year because you are standing taller than you have ever stood before. You are going to finish strong this year because you are standing taller than you ever stood before. What do you mean? If we were to be honest most of us are standing on the shoulders of someone that came before us it's like that cloud of witnesses we refer to them as our ancestors those individuals who went through some things that we could not imagine those individuals who did not have the opportunities that we have I know that things are not perfect in the world today but we are standing on the shoulders of some witnesses that made it over Shout out if you know that you got some kin folks uh, that made it over 400 years of bondage. Shout out if you got some kin folks and maybe you connected to some people that went through the Holocaust. I don't Holocaust. I don't care what it may be. You are standing on the shoulders of somebody that made it over. I hope that blesses you today and I hope it blesses you real good because you have to be reminded that if you're going to make it over, there is a crowd that is praying for you uh, I like how uh, Clay Evans used to say it all night and all day the angels keep watch over me that's the cloud of witnesses that when I can't keep myself all night and all day the angels keep watching over me there was somebody this week that was in an accident and you know doggone well you don't want to be here 
but all night and all day the angels keep watch over me you made enough bad choices that you should be somewhere locked up but all night and all day the angels watch over me you ought to be encouraged by that because if they have watched over you thus far what makes you think that you won't make it to the end men and women of God but the text goes on it says uh, the text want to encourage you that there's a cloud of witnesses around you but the text also wants to be practical the text says you're going to finish strong you are going to make it COVID-19 is not your problem racism is not your issue the text goes on to say this in order for you to finish strong you must do two things, lay aside every weight and lay aside every sin. Ooh, it says it. Let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings to us so closely. Can I deal with that first one first? Can I ask you a question? What is weighing you down right now in this season of your life? I remember when I was in the military, the worst thing that I used to hate, I mean hate it, because I got short legs, was going on what they call ruck marches, field marches, whatever you want to call them. They, they would have the audacity to put a 40 or 50 pound back, back on your back. Hey man, that's we got. I got a witness in here. You'd have to put this on your back, and and heaven forbid you was carrying a weapon. You'd have to put all of this on your back, and then next thing you know, 15 or 20 miles later, you arrive to your destination. And the first thing that I used to do as soon as I got to our stopping point, I would drop that heavy load. My brothers and sisters, God is saying that there is a race, there is an assignment on your life, but you are carrying a load. What what weight are you carrying? in right now that is stopping you from finishing the race can I can I talk to you about your weight if you are going to finish strong this year you're going to have to lay that weight down I need to talk to you about your weight because God says that there are some people that will hear you this time that they have been carrying a weight for far too long there there are some people that are here you right now that have been holding on to something far too long there are some people right now they are confused about what their problem is tell them that the race is already given to them but they are just carrying too much weight and he said for the other crowd he says some are also not only are they carrying weight they are still holding on to that sinful nature they are still holding on to that yesterday they are still holding on elder q this is when i would like to make a reference to the red cup but you said that's outdated i don't know what y'all holding on to now but whatever you may be holding on to god is simply saying this that if you want to finish strong if if you want to win the race you must lay down the things that the burdens that you've been holding on to and there are some sins that you got to turn away from that's that old school word it's called repentance it's that point where I get to my life that I've been journeying a long way uh, far too long and it's time for me to turn I wish I had some folks that have helped me to preach type in in the text box if you've ever turned away say I have turned away from some things I've turned away from some places. I've turned away from some strongholds. I've turned away from some depression. I need y'all to help me to preach uh, because somebody watching your timeline right now, you need to testify that you turned away from some stuff. Uh, and when you turned away, uh, the Bible says that he redeemed you, that he is all preachy again. All that means is that Jesus bought us with a price. Uh, he paid it all for all of my sins uh, he paid it all for all of my entanglements uh, everything I ever smoked uh, everything that you ever took uh, and the Bible says uh, that if your testimony is one of a redeemed saint uh, every now and then uh, the redeemed of the Lord ought to say so I wish I had some redeemed folks uh, that was willing to testify that he paid it all uh, and because he paid it all, I'm free. 
praise the Lord I'm free uh, that ought to be good news uh, because your criminal history say you're bound uh, your credit report say you're bound uh, but in Christ Jesus I'm free uh, I wish I had some folk that will testify that in your freedom uh, you've learned to lay your burdens down maybe that's why the old saints used to say uh, glory glory hallelujah since I laid my burdens down, uh, I didn't understand that back in the day. <laughs> they used to sing that in devotion. Uh, but now that I've had some burdens, uh, I can sing right along with them. <laughs> glory, glory, hallelujah. Since I laid my burdens down, if you need to lay some burdens down, uh, why don't you confess that right now? Lay them down on the altar. Lay them at his feet. And when you leave worship, lead them burdens right where you left them. Because God is calling us to lay every weight and every sin aside. My brothers and sisters, I need to help you. I need to help you to understand that as, as we walk through this text and as we lay down every weight, lay down every sin, the author also tells us this after you lay down your weight, you lay down your sin, you can run a little bit better. He says, let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Endurance speaks for itself, I think. It, it simply is a reminder that when we lay down the weights, the things that have been holding us, we have endurance, we have stanima, to make it to the end. I told y'all we're going to be dealing with some books of wisdom. Solomon reminds us in the book of Ecclesiastes, the ninth chapter, that the race is not given to the swift, neither to the strong, but to him that endures to the end. Type that in. Let's, let's get that scripture out there, that the race that you are in is not given to the swift, meaning it doesn't matter how fast you are. It doesn't matter if you had a head start. Neither to the strong. It's not about your physical strength. But in order to be successful, what God is requiring you to do is endure to the end. Paul makes it plainer for us in the book of Philippians where he reminds us that he will press on to reach the calling of the high prize of Jesus Christ. I Can I make it even plainer for you? I want you to understand that if you are going to make it if you are going to endure you have to be able to run this race to the end you see there are too many people that are a few feet away from victory but you give up just before you get to the end but let me ask you another question I really like asking questions in worship you see on the prayer line I asked those individuals that were a question and I want to ask you as well every Wednesday morning six o'clock a.m. Shout out to the faithful that join us every Wednesday morning, six o'clock a.m. I'm dropping hints, y'all. Every Wednesday morning, six o'clock a.m., we do a devotion and a prayer. And this time I asked them a question, and I want to ask you. The question I asked them this time was, what season are you in? What season are you in? In. Remember, I said we're going to finish strong. We got to have some wisdom. And if you're going to finish 2020, you must have the understanding of the season that you are currently in. Can I help you with that? Going right back to Ecclesiastes, Solomon wrote a powerful passage of scripture that is used by believers and non believers all around the world. Ecclesiastes 3 says this. To, for everything there is a what? Y'all type that in, a season. And he says there is a time for every activity under heaven. He says a time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, a time to harvest, a time to kill, a time to heal, a time to tear down, a time to build up, a time to cry and a time to laugh, a time to grieve and a time to dance, a time to scatter stones, a time to gather stones, a time to embrace, a time 
time to turn away, a time to search and a time to quit searching, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to mend, a time to be quiet and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. To everything there is a season. So my brothers and sisters, as I was reflecting on our race, as I was reflecting on finishing strong, this particular passage reminded me to tell you that the only way that you're going to endure this season of your life, the only way that you're going to finish strong in the year 2020 is that you have to have the wisdom enough to understand the season that you are in. Let me help you one more again. The Solomon reminded us that there is what? A season to tear down and a season to, to, to build up. There's a season for war and a season for peace. So let me help you to understand if I am in a season where I'm supposed to be tearing down some stuff but I'm actually trying to build sooner or later I'm going to run out of endurance if I'm in a season where I am at peace with my situation but God is saying I'm supposed to be at spiritual battle I'm going to run out of endurance because I'm not in alignment with God Solomon says that there is a season a time for planting and a time for harvesting but what happens if I misunderstand the season that I'm in and I find myself trying to harvest when I'm supposed to be planting after a while I'm going to get tired after a while I'm not going to endure after a while I'm not going to make it because I confused the season that I was in and as a result of confusing the season that I was in I found myself running the wrong race in the wrong direction there is somebody here today you need some wisdom to understand the season that you are in is God telling you to separate from some stuff or is God telling you to draw nearer is God telling you to speak up right now or is he telling you to be still and know that I am the Lord I don't know what season you are in but that's where wisdom is required if you are going to run the right race if you are going to finish strong you have to operate in the assurance and wisdom that you are on the right path in the right season doing what God has called you to do and my brothers and sisters as we continue to press forward the final part of the text tells us that the way that we are going to finish strong in this year the way that we are going to have our vision to come to pass it says this it says looking to Jesus the founder and perfecter of our faith uh, can you type perfecter in the text box you can type that in because we must learn a few things about this narrow passage of the scripture the first thing it says is to do this look to Jesus so after I have laid down every weight uh, after I realize that I'm running the right way so uh, when I find myself in struggles I don't look at my problems I don't look at my failures the text says that I can finish strong if I first learn to look to Jesus what does it mean to look to Jesus here you go for a third time with something that sounds real churchy the best thing that I can tell you about looking to Jesus is the fact that you you finally have realized that if you fix your focus on him uh, that you will have a focused faith like never before you see if you ever learn to put your eyes on the savior and the savior puts his eyes on you that's what the book of James declares as you are attempting to draw nearer to God God will draw nearer to you uh, and if you are trying to finish strong uh, if you have ever been in the race uh, you know the struggle gets real sometimes uh, but if God is drawing nearer to you he'll pick you up when you fall down uh, is there anybody that can testify that we do fall down uh, but by the grace of God you got up uh, I have learned to look to Jesus because I realize where my help comes from it may not make sense to you uh, but I dare you to try him. Uh, I dare you to try him for yourself uh, wherever you are right Right now call on his name wherever you are right now say God I tried you before and I didn't trust you like I should 
I've been to church before uh, and I left the last time. Uh, I didn't believe the last time. But God, I'm going to give you another chance. Uh, God don't care where you've been. Uh, he's more concerned about where you're going. Is there anybody that can testify that your yesterday was messed up? Uh, but God still saw the best in you when everybody else saw the worst in you. And now when you learn to look to Jesus, the text says that you learned uh, that he is the founder and perfecter of our faith uh, that ought to get you excited because as you are trying to finish uh, some of the things that you are going through it's just a matter of him perfecting your faith uh, some of the trials that you are experiencing is just him preparing you for the end of the race uh, we don't know what's coming in 2021 uh, so you better get your affairs to in 2020 but come what may whatever be tied God will take care of me is that anybody else testimony that your faith has been perfected enough that no matter what you go through no matter what it looks like God will take care of me count me out criticize me cuss me out Cut me off, keep your secrets, but God will take care of me. I wish I had some folk that'll help me to testify that no matter what you go through, God will take care of you. My brothers and sisters, it's almost time to go, but I want to help you to understand one thing. The very last part of the text you see, the last part of the text, uh, it reminds us uh, that when we put our eyes on Jesus, not only do we draw nearer to him, uh, he also draws nearer to us. But the last part of the text takes us back to that old rugged cross. Uh, you didn't even know that your ability to finish finishes at the cross. Uh, let's get the last part of the text. Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross uh, despising the shame and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God consider him who endured from sinners such hostility against himself so that you may not grow weary or faint hearted what was what was the writer trying to get across he said listen I know that you're being persecuted I know that they want to take your life but when you think about Jesus when you think about what he has done for you for real not just the story of it you have to understand it in your mind and in your heart that he went through this shameful experience it was a couple of weeks ago that I reminded you that the cross was no plaything. it was done to embarrass you it was done to shame you the more I studied the cross I recently was reminded that not only did they put you in front of the crowd and hang you as an example they said in most Roman crucifixions they would strip you naked to shame you, to embarrass you. And what the author was trying to get across to the people was that he went through that. Not because he had to, but because he wanted to. Not because he didn't have power to come down, but because scripture says that he could have called on legions of angels. That's like calling on the first calf to come, the fourth infantry division to come, the hundred and first airborne to come. Jesus could have called on everybody to come but he hung there just for you and so the author was trying to say listen if he could go through all of that to make it to the end if he could go through all of that to die on that old rugged cross if he could go through all of that to be buried in a, buried in a borrowed grave if he could go through all of that to descend below to preach 
to the captives if he could go through all of that when he had, didn't have to go through none of that if he could endure all of that uh, until that moment where the father called him and as we say in church early on a Sunday morning he got up with not some power but all power in his hand I'm just trying to help somebody I'm trying to remind you that the writer said whenever you get weak think about what he did for you whenever you get tired think about how he cared for you I love one of those songs that simply declares a living he loved me dying he saved me buried he carried my sins far away rising he justified freeing me forever one day he's coming back oh glorious day I'm just trying to help somebody who's trying to finish strong right now James Cleveland might bless you he says that I don't feel no way tired come too far from what I started from nobody told me that the road would be easy I know I told you that you was gonna finish strong uh, but nobody told you that the road would be easy but James Cleveland declared I don't believe he brought me this far to leave me I wish I had somebody else uh, that could testify with James Cleveland uh, that the Lord didn't bring you to September to drop you at the curb right now the Lord didn't bring you to the last part of the year to watch you fall on your face the Lord didn't bless you the last 10 years of your life for the enemy to come steal you now don't you know that folks been praying for you don't you know that cloud of witnesses is still saying you gonna make it that cloud of witnesses is still calling your name that cloud of witnesses testified don't give up don't give in don't turn around because sooner or later it's gonna turn in your favor I need to help somebody get up now finish strong now get up now finish strong now I don't know who I'm talking to but get up now, finish strong now, get up now, finish strong now, it's been rough now, but crying time over, it's been a struggle now, but I'm declaring the struggle over, get up now, it's time to finish strong, stand in the victory of the Lord, stand and see him work it, for every mountain he's brought you over, for every trial he's brought you through every mountain every valley every trial is a testimony that if he's done it before he'll do it again I wish I had some folk that'll help me close out because if he's done it before he'll do it again let's celebrate God to God be the glory to God be the glory. To God be the glory. Listen, listen, right where you are, the door to the house of God stands open. This is our opportunity to respond to whatever God may be saying to you. Today we just walked into it. But listen, if order for us to finish strong, God is saying that our wisdom must increase and our faith must be renewed our faith must be strengthened we got we we ain't even cracked the surface yet but when we get into this word and you stick with us for the next few weeks I promise you that the Lord is going to bless you I said something fast in my sermon and I want to say it one more time I'm not afraid of 2021 but the Holy Spirit is also telling me that the people of God need to be ready doesn't matter what it is good bad or indifferent and there were some things that you have supposed to have taken care of this year you can't carry it over to 2021 
we got enough to worry about in 2021 that there are some things in your life right now that God is saying it's time for you to finish strong because when you finish strong in this place I'm going to set your feet solid at the next wherever you are right now this is your opportunity to respond to this gospel I need you guys to help me to testify if you've made a confession of faith that Jesus Christ is the son of the living God Type yes in the, in the text box. That yes, I made that confession. Say it out loud. Yes, I made that confession. I've been baptized in accordance to that faith. If you're that individual that couldn't type yes today, it's okay. You're in great company. All of us were in that place where we couldn't type yes. But I want to remind you that this is your moment. I want to remind you that even if you're that person that typed yes, but, but life has happened to you and you're, you're not as connected to God as you used to be. Oh, keep playing that, my brother. Oh, listen, listen, listen. I love worship. Let me tell you something. As we invite you and he was playing that right there, I pray that speaks to you. The lyrics of that song, I feel no way he's tired. <laughs> I love it. I, I, I come too far. <laughs> from where he brought me from listen listen if that's you and you know that God has brought you a long way and God is speaking to you in any capacity today my email is there we want to make this as personal as possible wbowers at ebccharlotte.org if you're looking for a church home if you need to be reconnected to God if you need to make a confession of faith whatever you're standing in the need of we will finish 2020 strong in the name of Jesus let's celebrate God together amen 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 Praise God for another awesome worship experience. We continue worship through giving. I want to speak directly to our family members and all of our visitors. First visitors, praise God for being with us today. We are very thankful for your worshiping with us. If uh, the Lord is speaking to you in any way, uh, please just feel free to donate in any capacity. Uh, the information is on the screen. And for all of our family members, we continue to plant those seeds uh, through tithes and offerings. We continue to trust the scripture as found in 2 Corinthians, uh, the ninth uh, chapter, which reminds us that we want to plant uh, generously so that we can reap a, a, a generous harvest. So continue to plant those seeds, continue to trust God in this season. Let's continue to watch God move in our life. We thank God once again for you being with us. May God bless you, may God keep you. Don't forget, we're continuing this series on finishing strong. Uh, this was just a warm up, but we're really gonna dig in next week. So so thank God, for, thank you for being with us. May God bless you and may heaven smile upon you. All the angels sing about Jesus' mighty soul.